well, we get to have a little fun here. We're going to talk in this video about type illustrations. And while type illustration is not technically a graphic design use of typography, still it's an excellent exercise in looking at the different characters and how their structure can be utilized to create visual imagery. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of different type illustrations and you can decide which of these appeal to you because you're going to be doing an, an assignment with type illustration. So this first one is a very simple black and white depiction of a hippopotamus uh, and as it doesn't use exactly the letters in the word hippopotamus, but it does utilize several of them and, they, and you can recognize some of them. And the letters have not really been distorted, but they have been put together and structured in such a way that they suggest the shape of a stylized animal. And the, the typeface is a serif typeface, and the serifs make wonderful feet for the animal to stand on. You see the H in the middle giving structure to the body and the rounded forms suggesting the bulk of the animal's torso. The What looks like a lowercase j creates a nice smile on the animal's face, and we see the dots that could be part of the a lowercase i to create the eye and the nostril. So in this particular style, the letter forms themselves with their different characteristics help to construct this simple, whimsical, and pleasing illustration. This next one here is a different approach. And this is something that I created by starting with a silhouette of a penguin. And then I typed the word penguin in Illustrator and made each letter separate and created outlines so that I could distort and pull the letters into the shape I needed to describe the shape of the animal. Now, unlike the hippopotamus, I wanted the word penguin to be clearly read and you know really clear what it was, so I had to make sure the placement of the letters was easily read and clearly uh, defined. And you can see where I put the U inside the G it, to create and fill the space there, but yet still remain readable. So it was an exercise in distortion and pulling the letter forms. It's still a bit rough, but you get the idea of where I was going with this. So this is something that you can very easily do in Illustrator when by creating outlines with your type and then using the direct selection tool to pull the vector points into the shapes that you need. This next one looks to me like it might have been hand drawn, although it you, you know might have been digital, but it could very well have been hand drawn. And this again uses the shape of the animal filled with letter forms to describe it, but instead of the letters creating the shape such as the penguin was, this is instead filled with letter forms. And here the words and letters and phrases used uh, talk about what the animal is. It's a serpent, it's a snake, so we see references to serpents and also to Garden of Eden, Adam, uh, serpent, forbidden, that sort of thing. So this is getting a little bit more into a conceptual illustration and using type to communicate a verbal or a written message in addition to the visual message. Okay. This last one here that I'm going to show on this Photoshop file, I really like this because this I think goes a step farther than some type illustrations do. I found this with a Google search for type illustrations and you see a lot of this kind of style with type illustrations, but this one I think does a very good job because it tells a story as well as being technically quite well done. The letter forms uh, describe the shape of the hands and the arms, and they do it very nicely with uh, spacing and density to describe the shadows and the highlights. But you can see that there's also a good use of color here, and if you look closely, the phrases that are used help to tell the story. Now the red arm and hand is the one that is in need of assistance, is feeling alone, is feeling helpless, and the stronger looking black arm and hand that is coming down and holding the other hand has text that is reassuring and strong. So it does a good job of 
using type in a very nicely done technical way to describe the shapes, but also to tell a story in using color and the actual text. So I think that's a very strong uh, use of type. Now how would you create that? There are tutorials online that will show you how to create lots of different type effects, but uh, this one, I haven't found a, t a tutorial per se on how to do this, but you could probably create it line by line. It would take a while, but you certainly can do it. I would say Illustrator would be the one to use for this. I'm going to finish up here with showing you a website that I found again with that Google search for type illustrations. Uh, and this is a site called I saw that somewhere.com uh, various art uh, samples here to look at. And this is a series of illustrations by an illustrator named Sarah King. And her style looks hand-drawn, although it certainly could be digital. It's a little hard to tell. And her style is to take areas and literally fill them with type while remaining very readable and also using color and subtle texture to a really strong degree. I like how legible this is even though it's distorted and filled with text and again the color really helps to make this subtle and very intriguing and textural. The second one is hard to see because the letters are so small, but if you had a large poster of this, it would be really fun to read. Um, it looks like sea creatures under the, under the sea, and I'm sure there's a lot going on in there. Some of these are simpler than others. This one is pretty cool. It's a silhouette of the map of San Francisco, and the Museum of Modern Art is the title, so I am assuming that the names that she's got in here are the artists who are in the museum, and I really like the use of color on this one as well. Here is a picture of Obama. A lot of portraits are done with text, and this is extremely well done because the thickness of the letters show the dark hair and the back of the, of the head and under the chin where the shadows would be. So it's a very nice use of text spacing and text weight to describe the planes of the face and the highlights and shadows. Extremely strong. Here is a simpler one with some really good flow, obviously. Um, a nice image of a train with some dense text on there. And this last one is very strong. I can't show you the whole thing on it on the screen because it's so large, but I'll pan down slowly for you. It is a portrait, a sort of a psychedelic science fiction style fantasy portrait. And what's what works for me with this one is the uh, balance of blacks and whites here. Uh, there is some visual imagery. It's not entirely text, but what works nicely is the fact that she's got white text on black background and black background with white text, uh, rather um, <laughs> black and white reversal. So she's got a nice balance of blacks and whites here, and I think that's what makes this so rich and interesting. If it had all been black text on a white background, I don't think it would be as strong. So this bears some good looking, and something like this is extremely detailed, and we certainly don't expect you to whip off something like this in a couple of days for an assignment, but you can be inspired by what other people are doing to create your um, text illustrations, and it's perfectly fine to go back to the more simple approach, such as we see here, but when you do, that's perfectly fine, as I say, but you can really celebrate the letter forms by treating them as building blocks for your visual illustrations. So, enjoy, have fun, and I hope you uh, can come up with some arresting and creative uses of type for illustrative use. Thanks.